The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story transcribed from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here's the Clyde Beatty story, Hold That Tiger. Early in the summer, a few years ago, our circus arrived in Southern California and set up for a three-day stand. The first evening performance was well underway as my wife Harriet and I walked from my dressing room toward the performer's entrance to the big top. Oh, it's a beautiful night, Clyde. I wish we could just stay out and gaze at the stars and moon. Oh, so do I, Harriet. But I'm afraid a lot of people would holler for their money back. I'm about due on. Mm, I know. I hope Roger doesn't give you too much trouble tonight. I keep hoping that, too. But I've about decided that striped devil will never give anything but trouble. I wish you'd take him out of the act before he kills one of the other cats or... Or me. <laughs> oh, don't worry, honey. I'm watching him like a hawk these days. You're right about the other cats. He's beaten some of them up pretty badly. He's more trouble than he's worth, that much I know. Starts a fight every time he gets in the arena. Why do you put up with it? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's because he's the biggest and most beautiful tiger we've got. He's also the oldest, though. Maybe that's what's the matter. Old age is making him mean and grumpy. Could be. It... Oh, hi, Hank. Hi, Mr. Beatty. Mrs. Beatty. Oh, Hank. Everything all set? Yeah, yeah rare to go, boss. Tunnel's full of your little playmates, and the fire hose is laid out in case Roger starts another free-for-all. Let's hope it won't be necessary to give him the water treatment tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention is directed to the steel arena. Your cue's coming up, Clyde. Yep. See you at the safety cage, Mr. Bates. Okay, Hank. Well, well, I see you in just in time to catch your act, Clyde. Good luck. Oh, hi, Larry. Thanks. See you in a few minutes, honey. All right, Clyde. Thanks. Oh, keep your fingers crossed, Larry. This is where... Uh oh Oh, there goes Roger off his pedestal. Roger. He's going after Nero again. Yeah. Oh, there goes Caesar. And then King. Come on, break it up. They're all fighting in a second. Oh, Larry. What an awful mess. Oh, he'll never be able to break this one up. We'll return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. Now, back to Clyde Beatty's story, Hold That Tiger. Come on, bring it up. Get back there. Hey, you got a sneaker there, Mr. Beatty. Right here, Hank. Back there, you devil. Better turn on that fire hose, Hank. Roger holds it up. Okay, it goes. That's it. Right on, Roger. Keep it on him, Hank, while I try to force Nero back. Oh, that was really a workout, Larry. Yes, I could tell that. Oh, poor Harriet. I just wish she hadn't been watching. That's why I followed you to your trailer, Clyde. I, uh, I want to talk to you for a minute about Harriet. Hmm? Now, look, pal. I want to talk to you like a Dutch uncle now. I don't think you're being fair to her or to yourself either. What on earth are you talking about, Larry? Look, I mean the things have been going on in that steel arena the past month or so. All those big fights and those close calls you've had all on account of Raja. Don't mention Raja to me. If you think I enjoy having okay, to be... Okay, okay. But before you drop the subject, I just want to tell you it's pretty tough on Harriet. You take all this business in stride, but... It's not so easy for your wife to stand outside and watch all that, you know. Sure, sure, I know. But... Who is it? Me, Mr. Beatty, Hank. Oh, come in, Hank. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Beatty, but I thought you'd want to know. King is dead. What? He died in his cage just a minute ago, and the vet says it was from that fight with Roger. Mm. Oh, I was afraid this had happened someday. I'm sorry, boss. King was one of the best lions we had. Gee, that's a shame, Clyde. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Hank, 
Okay, we'll take care of things, Mr. Bailey. Thanks, Hank. Okay, say it, Larry. It's my own fault. Well, I wasn't going to. I but... know what you're thinking, though. I've worried Harriet, gotten one of my best lions killed, and stuck my own neck out a mile, all because of a certain tiger and the fact that I'm stubborn, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, if you weren't the best manager I ever had, I'd fire you for agreeing with. <laughs> but I've got a better idea, Clyde. Shoot. Get rid of Roger. Get rid of... Mm -hmm. Larry, have you ever tried getting rid of a tiger? That's not something you just walk up to some bird with and say, here, he's yours. <laughs> oh, I know. But you seem to have forgotten. We're right near one of the finest zoos in the country. And I bet they'd be tickled pink to get Roger. By golly, you're right. I'd forgotten that big zoo in the park. Exactly. Okay, Larry, I'll settle this whole thing. In the morning, I'll go out to the zoo and see if they want 500 pounds of striped dynamite. Stanley J. Potter, zoo director. Come in. Mr. Potter? Yes, yes, come in, come in. Thanks. I'm Clyde Beatty, Mr. Potter. Well, 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 I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Beatty. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Yes, I heard your circus was in town. How's it going? Oh, fine. We had him on the straw last night. I, and uh, I uh, beg your pardon? <laughs> circus lingo, meaning we played the standing room. Oh, oh well, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Potter, I know you're wondering why I came here, so I'll get right to the point. How's your zoo fixed for tigers? Tigers? Why, not too well, Mr. Beatty. <laughs> well, if you're trying to get some tigers, I, I'm afraid you'll have to go somewhere else. We don't have as many as we'd like ourselves. <laughs> no, no. I don't want to buy any, Mr. Potter. I'm trying to get rid of one. Uh, oh, well, you want to get rid of one of your tigers? Yes. Well, but I don't understand. Well, it's really quite simple. Uh, Raja's become a luxury that I can't afford. He won't work in the act anymore. He starts to fight with the other cats every chance he gets. And, well... Last night, he killed one of my lions. Oh, mm, I see. And that's about all there is to it. I thought your zoo might like to take him over. Well, this is most unusual, Beatty. A am I to understand you want to give us this tiger? That's right, if you want him. Well, well, we certainly do. Tigers have been hard to obtain in recent years, as you probably know. Well, we'd be very happy to take the one you have, uh, providing he's in good health. Don't worry, he's too healthy. Oh. Getting along in years, but he's a perfect specimen. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, what is he, a uh, uh, Bengal? No, no, he's a Siberian tiger. One of the biggest I've seen, too. He'll weigh at least 500 pounds. Oh, say, he is a big fellow. And a mean one. You'll have to give him a private cage, Mr. Potter. He'll try to kill any other cat he can reach. Well, <laughs> we'll see that he has plenty of privacy, and he'll get the best of care. Uh, uh, now, when would you like for us to have him picked up? Sooner the better. Right away, if you like. Well, very well, very well. I'll call the transfer company and have them take a cage right out to your grounds. Our own truck's out of town at the moment. Well, we'll be expecting them. And my cage boys will see that he's loaded safely. Well, fine, fine, and thank you very much, Mr. Beatty. We appreciate it. Don't mention it, Mr. Potter. I'll be glad to get old Raja out of my hair. <laughs> Yeah. Over a little more. There, there, that's it, Hank. Okay, Jimmy, can't you forget it now? Open Roger's door. That's it. Now drive me out of the cage. Hey, they didn't waste any time coming after that tiger, eh, Clyde? Oh, oh hello, Larry. Hello, Now they are. seem tickled to death to get him. That's it. Now get the other door shut, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, he acts like he wants to go, too. Well, he'll have it plenty soft at the zoo. No routines to perform, just... Sit around and look pretty. Hey, okay, boys, it's all yours. Take it away. Oh, darn it, Larry. I kind of hate to see the old boy leave. <laughs> You're like a mother hen with her chicks when it comes to those cats, Clyde. Hmm. But believe me, it's good riddance. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. Uh, what time is it, Larry? It's uh, quarter to 11. Want to get a cup of coffee in the cookhouse? No, thanks. I think I'll wander back to my dressing room. See you around. So, um, I'll just discard this queen. Clyde, 
I've just got it. Hmm? Oh, oh, sorry, honey. Let's see. I can't use the queen. I have to draw from the deck. Nah, that's a big help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now, I'll just take that discard, throw away my four, and that's your nummy. Oh, not again. Again. But you've caught me with about 60 points in my hand Good. here. Good. Count them up. I want this to be accurate, Clyde. You'd think I'd get at least one decent hand in a half hour's time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 54 points, honey. Mm -hmm. Oh, that puts me out again. Well, congratulations. You're not saying any more, do you? What makes you say that? Just because you're winning, that doesn't mean no, I don't no. want... No, I didn't mean that, Clyde. Hmm. You've just been playing to keep me amused. But I know you don't feel much like it. Uh, come on, let's go get some lunch, shall we? That's not a bad idea, honey. Now that you mention it, I think I'm hungry. Mm, so am I. I wonder what cookies got on the menu today. Well, we'll soon find out. <sighs> Wouldn't it be nice if we could have weather like this everywhere on our tour? <laughs> oh, you dreamer, you... <laughs> Wait till we hit the Midwest next month. Mm, I know. We'll welter, but I'll still love it. Oh, Clyde, there's Larry running from the ticket wagon. He's waving at us. Yeah, I see him. I wonder what's on his mind. Clyde! Clyde! Wait a second. I've got to talk to you. He seems plenty excited. Clyde, something terrible has, has happened. What? What is it, Larry? I just got a call from the man you talked to at the zoo. That transfer company's truck had an accident. An accident? Well, what? what? Clyde Rogers escaped... He's loose. Oh, no. Are you sure, Larry? Where? I don't know the details, but somehow he got out of the cage in the truck and it happened inside the park, not far from the zoo. Clyde, that tiger's a killer. I know it, honey, and that park's full of people. I only hope I can get over there before someone's clawed to death. We'll return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. Now, back to Clyde Beatty and Hold That Tiger. The news that Raja had escaped from the truck taking him to the zoo hit me like a bombshell. 500 pounds of ferocious tiger running loose in a park full of people could turn out to be anything but a picnic. Although my responsibility ended when the truck pulled away from the circus grounds, I knew that unless something were done and done quickly, someone would die. What are you going to do, Clyde? What are you looking for? <clears throat> Just this, Larry. Your big game rifle? Yeah. I only hope I don't have to use it. Well, you've recaptured big cats before. Sure, but not Raja. Of all the cats to get away from somebody, that striped devil's the worst. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm, this should be enough ammunition. Come on, let's get outside. Here's now. Come on now. All right. All your men are here now, Mr. Beatty. Good, Hank. All right, men. Men, give me your attention. Hold it. Hold it. You all know what might happen unless we get Raja in a hurry. I'm taking Hank ahead with me to the park. I want the rest of you to bring a canvas sidewall and a cage on one of the trucks. We may not be able to capture Raja alive, but at least we'll try. Jimmy, take the truck and men to the zoo administration building and wait there until you hear from us. Are there any questions? Okay, get going then. Hi. Hi, did you get your rifle? Yes, honey. You ready to go, Hank? All set, Mr. Beatty. Mr. Brewster's car right over by the ticket wagon. Okay. Bye, honey. Goodbye, Clyde. And... Don't worry. I'll be careful. Come on, Hank. I'm glad we picked up that police car. They're running good interference for us. Yeah. They'll save us a few minutes and everyone counts. Yeah, I'll switch on the radio to see if there's anything new about Roger. I'm hoping he decides to take cover for a while. Well... He's pretty unpredictable. Might do just the opposite, and if he does, why... Oh, wait a second. The, the, the huge tiger was last seen running into a wooded area at the north end of the park. But it is feared the animal may continue his flight into the residential section. Did you hear that? It's... The zoo authorities have requested this station to advise all people living within a five-mile radius of the park to stay indoors until further notice. Oh, good. Stay tuned to this station for further developments. And now, the weather. Yeah. Uh... I guess we heard enough. Oh, brother, that, that ain't good, Mr. Beatty. It sure isn't. Step on it, Hank. Look at the crowd that's gathered. He must still be in the park here. I hope so. I think those men are from the zoo. One of them got a rifle. Yeah, that's Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter! Oh, oh, Beatty! Beatty! 
Oh, I, I'm glad you've come, man. I... Is he still in the park? Yeah, well, we can't be sure, but we think he's in the woods here. Uh, I've got men stationed all around it. Unless he slipped out before we arrived, he's still there. Good. I hope so. Well, I've also sent word to the Naval Air Station. They're sending some expert riflemen out. Should be here in a little while. I've got some men coming, too. We may be able to take Raja alive. Well, well, I, I, I guess you know what you're doing. I assure you I won't endanger anyone to take Raja alive. Yes, well, of course, I realize that. Uh, what do we do first now? I've got to make certain he's in there first. No use standing around here waiting if he's already given us the slip. Yes, that's right. Hank, you and I'll take a little walk through the woods and see if we can spot him. Okay, Mr. Beatty, if he's in there, we'll find him. I'm afraid. <laughs> I know what you mean. But he's more used to us than anyone else. Maybe you'll be glad to see us. Well, now, see here, three pair of eyes are better than two. I'll come along with you. Uh, I don't think you should, Mr. Potter. Nonsense. Let's go. We're wasting time. Okay, come on. Too bad the, the ground is so dry, boss. Otherwise, we might be able to track him. Yeah. I wish we had a good hound along. Listen. Oh. What was it, Potter? Oh, sorry. Guess it was my imagination. Huh. I thought I heard something up ahead. The same. We better keep our eyes peeled. Maybe you did at that. Stick close to me, Hank. I wish I'd had another rifle for you to bring along. Yeah. Wouldn't have hurt my feelings any either. Now, now, this clump of brush ahead, Biggie. I'll circle it on the right. You go around to the left. Okay. Keep a sharp lookout. That's the kind of a spot he might like. Yes, all right. I'll meet you around the other side. The guy's got plenty of nerve. Don't know many have come in here looking for a tiger, rifle or no rifle. Yeah, he's all right. Boys on the truck ought to be here in a minute. If Raja's in here, we'll, we'll have him back in the cage in no time. If Raja's in here. I'm beginning to wonder. Yeah, me too. But if he was out in the residential district, wouldn't he have been reported by this time? Maybe. Of course, it's possible that he... Hey, it's him. Sounds like it came from the other side of this thicket. It did. Come on, let's hurry. Beatty, he's in here. We heard him. Don't get too close there. Mr. Beatty, there he goes. Hunter, watch it. Charge him straight at him. Why don't he shoot? Beatty, Beatty. Stay back, Hank. You got him, Mr. Beatty. You got him. You okay, Potter? <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm all right. Thanks, Beatty. Oh, Boy, that was just in time. Well, he, he came at me like lightning. I, I, I didn't have a chance to shoot. I know, oh, and I'm my. sure glad that I did. Roger meant business. Well, he won't do any more business, that's for sure. No, Hank, that's for sure. <laughs> Clyde, I was afraid you'd go on before I found you. Just waiting for my cue, honey. Not due for a couple of minutes yet. Oh, good. Why? What's on your mind? Oh, nothing. Well, it looks like a full house again this afternoon. Yep. Couldn't be fuller. <laughs> you should see Larry. He's delighted with this crowd. Huh? Well, of course, he knows that tiger getting loose in the park was strictly accidental, but... Well, the publicity man in him is just bubbling over after the stories in the paper and on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid they make it sound a lot more dramatic than it was. Oh, now, you needn't be so modest with me. I got the whole story from Hank, and I must say, it sounded quite exciting. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, here I go again. You're going to be watching the act? I certainly am. And for the first time in weeks, I won't be petrified. Huh? Petrified? Yes. Now that Raj is not in there to cause trouble, I might even enjoy seeing your act for a change. <laughs> and now, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. I sort of missed Raja's fight and spirit for a while, but I soon realized that what had happened was for the best. Don't miss my next exciting story. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas. Written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart-Housey. 
Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.